Hey friends, and welcome to a horror game called Teeth of Glass. The only thing I know about this game is that it's a point-and-click horror game and it's got a really cool art style. And I also wanted to show you guys this. Here's Chester with his bow tie. Say hi, buddy. Oh, okay. He loves showing off his little bow tie. You guys ask how he's doing all the time, so I wanted to show you on camera. Chester is doing great. Happiest cat in the whole world. Still my best friend. Pumpkin is also doing great. I talked about this a little bit on a previous video, but not too long ago, we actually almost lost Chester. He's had multiple surgeries. It was a scary time for a while, but he has been great since that last surgery. And man, has he been having fun. And during this process, when I've talked to people about it, they always say, man, that cat is so lucky to have you. Look at all you've done for him, all the money you've spent on him. But really, I think it's me who's lucky to have him. Through my best times and my worst times, he has been right there. During panic attacks, during depressive episodes that last for months, there's Chester, free of judgment. I'll give you the perfect story that sums up how great of a pet he is. About a year or so ago, I was having a particularly difficult day anxiety-wise. I was up late pacing, trying to calm down, until about two in the morning when I got so physically exhausted that I just laid down right on the living room floor. And I just laid there for a minute and I reflected. And after about 10 minutes, I thought, okay, let me get upstairs, go to bed. Chester and Pumpkin are probably waiting for me. And as I get up, I look to my right, and there on the floor is Chester. Dad, if this is where you're sleeping, this is where I'm sleeping too. At the time, that moment made me very emotional, and that's just one example of the amazing things he does for me. I love you guys, and I hope you're safe. With that being said, here is Teeth of Glass. We've got an elderly male, very underweight, age unknown, gunshot wound to the chest. Hmm. Oh, that's creepy. Pulse? I... Unknown. What do you mean, unknown? I couldn't find it, but he's breathing. That's impossible. It must just be faint. Just get him hooked up to the monitor. We need to operate now. Dr. Hagstrom? Yes. Are you ready to operate? Yes, preparing to make the first incision. Ooh, are we gonna have to do that? Oh. I really love the art style to this game. Um, and, and it's definitely made in like that old school point and click style from what I could see from the screenshots, but. Ooh, I still don't. Oh, okay. Oh my God. Where's his blood? I've never seen anything like it. Are those his ribs? Why are they black? How is he alive? Get that bullet out of him first, then, well, just get the bullet out. All right. Um, disconcerting coils. My priority was the bullet. Over and above any other condition that was presented, at least for now. Coils? Glass shards? I scraped the tweezers along the glassy surface. How could such a thing exist? Oh my goodness. All right, let's get the bullet out. The inky black blood splashed on my face. It felt both hot and cold and seemed to work its way past my eyes, across my face, into my nose and mouth. Ew. And then I fell into darkness. I love the visuals in this game. I love the visuals in this game. Brings me back to like flash horror days or like, you know, clock tower style visuals, which I can't wait for the re-release of clock tower. Dr. Claridge? Blake? What the hell? Where are you? All right, so now uh, movement is done point and click as well. So everything's done with the mouse, just like those old school games. Check the whiteboard here. I had more important things to do than wipe it down. True, anesthesia. There was no need to use the anesthesia cart. I still want to explore. Get a good idea of what's going on. Surgical tools. There was nothing on the tray. And there's no one on the surgical bed either. Can we check the x-rays? There's no need to take them down. Liquid residue. I wasn't going to touch it again. It was probably highly toxic. Hmm. Well, what can we do here? Huh. Yeah, everyone's gone. 
Oh, did I actually click the bed again? Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Um, we have to try to look for another sign of life. I'm not sure if it was nighttime before, but it's pitch black out there and it's raining. Check the supply closet. I didn't have any reason to go rifling through the cupboard. What on earth is this? What in the Silent Hill 4? This is the only way out. How the hell did someone chain these doors shut? Oh... Bloody handprints appeared on the glass of the cupboard. It was a cheap Halloween trick, the kind that Dr. Blake liked to pull. But not at work. Blake? Wherever you are, this isn't funny. People are relying on us. This will cost you your job. I don't think this is a prank. The only answer was the incessant rain. Damn it. I looked at the cupboard. Perhaps I had to look inside and play his stupid game to get out of this. He would be gone by tomorrow if I, if I had anything to do with it. You know, to be honest, I wouldn't be happy either. Can we look at the handprints? Hmm. There was something at the back of the shelf. I needed to get the bottles out of the way to get to it. Okay. Um. Oh, we have an inventory as well. Okay. Can I get... Oh! What? What the hell was that? Did I imagine it? A creature. Bottle with a key inside. Is that one of the keys to the door, possibly? I guess that doesn't work. That's a funny idea. Okay, whatever. So, this works like... What? It was my home. My study. Why was it here? And the audio is like all reversed. Large leather bound book. To become reborn, you must first recognize your roots, the land that first held you. Secondly, you must bathe in the blue waters that quenched your thirst. Lastly, you must allow the essence of life to flow. Blood be bound. So we must first recognize your roots, the land that first held you. Well, I don't know exactly what that entails. Let's look at the photograph. Look at this photograph. It was a photograph of me and Mary on our wedding day. But what had happened to our eyes? That audio is so unsettling. Wait a minute. Red teardrop gem. Let's open it up. Grab the gem. Um... Mary? Is Mary not with us anymore? Oh... I wonder where the gem goes. And I can't unlock this. Can I wash anything? No, I can't interact with the sink at all. Okay. Well, someone's using... The whiteboard it says lost. I had more important things to do than wipe it down. Okay, are we not going to address the elephant in the room? And now there's an organic mass on the table? No, there was no way I was touching that. Okay, we're just going to... Just going to ignore that. And the eye on the television screen. Great. Okay, let's... What is this? The marionette was almost life-size and made of carved wood. I couldn't place the style. Maybe it was Middle Eastern? There's a wooden bowl. I can't do anything with it. There's a marionette. The wood was beautifully carved. The surface felt smooth as skin. Okay, is there nothing I can do here? Lost? No. Green liquid. Curious blue bottle? No. Clay bottle. That doesn't do anything. The liquid took on the appearance of blood. Okay, I did something, but I was just randomly clicking stuff. And strange to tell, and strange to tell, among that earthen lot. Oh, she's talking. Some could articulate, while others not. And suddenly one more impatient cried. Who is the potter, pray, and who is the pot? 
A small iron key appeared in the bowl as the blood seeped away. Alright, well, let's go ahead and grab that key. Not sure how I solved that, but... I basically just played around with chemicals, which you all should not do. Moving- wait, what? I didn't know that was gonna happen. Moving the cupboard revealed a huge, fleshy wound in the wall. Ugh, I could hear crying from within? Let me try using the iron key on the chain. Okay, it doesn't lock one of them. Alright. So we have to collect two more keys. We're figuring this out. Let's go ahead and keep searching. Whoa, what was that? Good evening, good morning, whatever the time is. Who is this? It means very little to me. I... Before we begin, can I check your name? What? Joshua Hagstrom, yes. Dr. Joshua Hagstrom. Yes. Excellent. Always good to start by knowing who you're talking to. Was this the body we were operating on? I suggest you ask some questions, young man. I suppose this must be quite shocking. Maybe I would have reacted the same once upon a time. I'm a bit long in the tooth now. <laughs> Funny. Anyway, ask your questions. We must draw this to a conclusion. All right. Who are you? What are you? I'm sure I did once have a name, but I must have forgotten it long ago. I don't need a name, to be honest. All I am is my role. Your role? As what? Scribe, maybe? Historian? Some days I feel like little more than a glorified dictaphone. What are you recording? Everything that I see. A story that I'm privileged to be witnessing. Yes, call me The Witness. That will do. What kind of story? The best kind. Adventure, love, loss, struggle, triumph. A masterpiece. Your skin, your body, how are you alive? I don't know that I am. I exist. That is enough. All I need are my senses to observe, my mind to understand, and my hand to wield the pen. All else is just matter, free to be lost. What is this place? I suppose the best way to describe it is as holding cell is as a holding cell. No, sorry, I should rephrase that. Maybe an airlock? What? I know, probably a poor analogy. Maybe limbo, purgatory, but I should say not in a religious sense. From what I have seen, there is no god. Not in the popular sense, anyway. There is power, that is certain. Apologies, I'm rambling. What the hell is going on? Am I dead? No, not at all. Well, not yet. Even so, life is temporary anyway, my friend. From the point of view of eternity, you may as well be dead. What is that supposed to mean? Stop speaking in riddles. Well, that's a fair point. I do rather like the sound of my own voice. I rarely get used to it nowadays. Who is the man on the table? Oh, he would have what remains of my guts for garters if I were to say his name. So who did we operate on? A being more powerful and all-knowing than this witness here? Needless to say, he is the reason that I'm here and the reason you are here. He's watching you. Quite the privilege. What is he? Is he a demon? Ha! <laughs> No, not at all. He's a man just like you. Well, maybe not exactly like you. There's no one quite like him. Can you help me get out of here? Yeah, of course. The destination, though, that's what you need to decide. What do you mean? I will lay it out for you, good doctor. You've always been a conscientious man, diligent in all matters of work, have you not? I... I have. Following in the footsteps of your father, your brothers, you were the youngest to achieve your doctorate. How do you know all this? You chose those nights away from your wife, from your daughter, to follow your dream. I didn't choose. It is always a choice. I'm not trying to shame you, doctor. You seek knowledge. You want to better yourself. And by your actions today, you've given yourself the opportunity to see things, places, events that you would never have the chance of otherwise. You can join us, see the unseen, rise up against the etheric bonds that shackle humanity, and break them. Or you can return to your family, to your profession, become a ripple in the ocean of time, lost in a heartbeat. And this is not without meaning, my friend. For every moment of the cosmic that you witness with us, you will miss a moment just as vital for your soul with your wife, your daughter. I... 
I had a family once too. I was a grandfather. I suggest you take some time to decide. Come back to me when you're certain of your answer. I will be waiting. So the witness is offering us two paths forward. One path where we return to our normal everyday life, I guess still equipped with the knowledge that these cosmic beings beyond our understanding exist. Or I can join him and that other being that was being discussed that we operated on and help in some sort of cosmic ethereal quest that will also help humanity in some way. Basically, a much higher purpose than what we can understand here. Interesting. And how do we make that decision? And also, what of this door? We still don't know how to get out. All right. So, the whole... Wait, I can crawl in it? Oh! And there's someone crying in here. What do you guys think of the atmosphere and the presentation of this game so far? It's got such a strange vibe to it. Web... Oh, fleshy webbing. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I use the scalpel? Um, I think a scalpel would be great. Can we really not do that? Silver bullet doesn't work. Acid? Oh, okay. Oh, there's something in the cavern with us to our left. And the crying stopped. Toy bear. It was my daughter Freya's toy bear, Monty. The eyes had long ago been lost, but there was something else there now. A red gem lodged in the eye socket. I made my way back out of the hole as quickly as I could. So now what? Can I use the scalpel on the bear to get the other gem? No, that would cause too much damage. I need to be more careful. Okay, we can probably use the tweezers on it. Let's try that. A lot of these point-and-click games are trial and error. I was able to carefully remove the jewel without damaging the toy. Freya wouldn't have forgiven me if I had hurt Monty. So now we have two gems. I had nothing else to gain from the marionette. No idea where the gems go. Oh, great. The being. Wasn't going near him. Yeah, to be fair, that's probably for the best. So we can't do anything with the marionette. And we only have one key. Man. Now one of the keys is in here. Can I... Let me, let me talk to this guy again, the witness. So you're ready? What's your decision? Knowledge or love? Love. Let's go back to our family. The curious, twisted man gave a sigh, a smile moving fleetingly over his withered features. So be it. I took the red gem. It was warm in my hand. Um, okay. What do I do with this red gem? I had nothing else to say to him. The decision was made. I still don't know what to do with these gems. Oh, I managed to lever the wires off and get the key out, but the scalpel broke in the process. So I had to use the scalpel on the... What is it? On the, on the bottle we got. Okay. So, if I chose knowledge, does he give me the last key? Wait, where's the painting of my family? I had nothing else to say to him. Yeah, I have no idea what to do with these jewels. All right, let's go try to find where to put them. I have no clue. Because yeah, they don't go here. I pressed the jewel into... Oh, they go in the silver bullet! Oh, okay. So now we can get out. And I'm assuming if we choose knowledge, he gives us the third key. That won't do anything. Completed silver bullet. That won't do anything. Okay. 
completed. The symbol on the bullet was glowing. I felt nausea rise in my gut as I stared at it, the blood pounding in my ears. And then, as the bile rose in my throat... Back to normal? It's him. A shame. I had hoped that... But then, hope means little. And you have earned the right to choose. You saved me, and I will respect your decision. Remain here, but know this. In your silent evenings, in your choked back confessions, as the shadows of doubt dig their way into your soul. Hagstrom, can you hear me? He's coming round. Contact his wife, her name's Mary, the contact details are in his file. His teeth. Hagstrom, we're gonna do some tests, you just passed out. Have you been drinking enough? Will he be okay? I think so. What happened to him? He was operating on, he was, is there a patient on the way? I don't think so. The table's prepped, but there's no one. I remember his teeth. So this being, we saved its life. It only appeared to us. I wonder what, what almost took it. I think we all need a rest. His teeth, his teeth. I will be waiting. His teeth were made of glass. Wow, that was such a cool ending. Okay, of course we need to see what happens if we choose knowledge. Okay, we have both the other keys, and this time we're choosing knowledge. The curious twisted man nodded, his mouth firm. So be it. Yep, he gave us the last key, perfect. Okay, now we can unlock all of the doors and see what's behind them. I'm very curious because it seems like both of these beings beyond, beyond our understanding want us to join them. As the last chain fell away, I flung the doors open. Nothing could have prepared me for the sight that lay beyond. Wow, I'm so excited. What is this? Oh yeah, this is like cosmic, cosmic stuff. What is that? What is that, like a moon? The city of pillars, Dr. Hagstrom. My home. And one day, I will return. The city of pillars? I have a feeling that this is part of a greater universe, uh, and this kind of implies it as well. Is this part of a greater universe that uh, this developer is building with their games? I don't know, it says this is not the end, so I have a feeling that maybe the other games kind of tie into it. Very cool nonetheless. Um, and I still think it works as a standalone experience. I think it's really creepy and hits that classic point-and-click horror game vibe perfectly. Guys, thank you so much for joining. I love you all very much. Please be safe, and I'll see you in the next one.